Here's the other head. Uh, is there anything to note? Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Mm, not really. I really don't think there's anything uh, special about it that we need to tell you about. Um, no. Looks like may have been this one here leaking. I don't know. Don't care. Uh, impact is very important when you take your uh, exhaust bolts out. These studs, uh, in my experience, most of the time the whole the whole entire stud turns out. Do something with it later. You don't put them right back in the way they, they came out. Doesn't matter. Uh, this one here, we might want to not forget to take the temp sensor out of it. So we need to get that. Three quarter, 19, maybe. I don't know. I forgot. I honestly forgot. 19. This thing here looked like it was a little leaky. May not be, I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. Kind of cruddy. So, that's it for that one. From here on out, it's cleanup time. Head gaskets are pretty deteriorated, actually. But, anyway, back over here, I guess. If we want to check this, there you go. There's a there's a carnage on that one. So I looked on the uh, on service information actually about the oil pan. Uh, I was wrong about that. Well, I was semi wrong on that. Uh, you got to remove the AC compressor and the starter to get the pan off. Uh, it does list a lot of hours for it, but I don't think that that is actually realistic. You could do that if you wanted to. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to talk to the lady. I'm not. I'm not gonna do it for free. I was wasn't. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind if it's a couple of hours extra work, but that seems to be a little bit more work. So uh, I don't want to get into it that deep. I don't. Know. I guess that's uh, preference. So whatever. But either way, this is a part where we will have to be extremely careful, and we'll put rags all through here and continue with our cleanup. Uh, not going to show that part of it, I don't think. No, not going to show that part of it. I'm just going to go ahead and, and clean it up and uh, we'll go from there. I'll turn the camera back on when all it is cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, one thing I guess I'm going to add. I don't have to worry about a number one soon or any of that. Obviously that right there, well, maybe not so obvious to you guys, but that is a push rod engine. Uh, push rod engine, the timing is, is not even involved with the heads. Uh, we yanked the heads off. We undid everything on top. Our rockers and all that good stuff, well, that's the reason it's got rockers in the first place. But anyway, uh, that's just a matter of tightening them down and, and torquing them, you know. And that there is, there is no timing or anything like that, in case you didn't know that. Give me just a second, I'm going to dry my hand real quick. I am going to elaborate a little bit further. I know how some of you just love to hear me talk. <laughs> Something kind of a teaching moment. Uh, I look for shiny spots when I look for the head gasket leak. If I if I'm interested, which I'm not in this one here, uh, because I know I know it was leaking. So, but I will I will show it to you and give it away for you. Okay, so let me let me go ahead and flip this around. Okay, the front bank three pistons. Rear bank, one, two, three. So, again, one, two, three, one, two, three. Look at that piston right there. Okay, I uh, shouldn't have to say any more at this point in time. Put this camera back over here. Uh, that right there is 100% antifreeze going into the cylinder. That is about the only thing that will clean a piston top like that. So, now you know.
Oh, mix. So some of that I'm going to have to edit out now because I left the camera running again a while ago. Um, I used my little evacuation tool, my money vac, and I got all the antifreeze out of here. When we clean the gasket surfaces and all that good stuff, um, you're going to get bits and pieces that fall in the coolant. So here's what I do. As you've seen, there's a couple of pieces that came out of here. Some of that is actually uh, stuff that was kegged on the side walls. Uh, I've been doing this. I just I didn't just do this. I have been doing it. So uh, I've I've done it already. There's there's going to be more pieces coming out of it. Uh, as far as the gasket material and all that good stuff, take my word for it. Uh, all of that flew out. Uh, no problem at all. Generally, when you blow air in those things, you know, in the in the chambers right there, it comes right out. Uh, as for the surface here, uh, it doesn't look really good because uh, that uh, top right here has got a lot of pity. Uh, I suspect it'll be good enough to seal, but uh, yeah, it does have, definitely does have a lot of pitting. Uh, truth to be known, it ought to be replaced or decked or whatever. You know, that, uh, I, well, that, I mean, that's almost to it. it. It really should be, should be decked, but uh, I don't think that's in the stars for this vehicle. Uh, the other thing that I do anyway, aside from this, the other thing I do, in the cylinders, make sure you don't scratch the cylinders, by the way. The little gap around the, the piston. Don't blast the gap. So make sure that you don't trap anything there. Not going to do it right now, but uh, I'm going to raise the vehicle up a little bit to roll the engine over. I generally roll it uh, roll it over uh, up to two turns and keep, keep doing that to where we get everything out of it. Uh, it does sometimes lodge bits and pieces. Uh, between the uh, piston and solar wall. We don't want to scratch anything later on, so uh, cleaned up like that is good enough. Uh, definitely good enough, so there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for you it was a day. I mean, for you it was a couple of minutes, and for me it was a day. That's the headset. I get a knifey. Uh, Let's see what we got there. Yes, it's got exhaust gaskets. Good. It says it does, but we can't always be sure. Now, this kit happens to have injector O-rings in it anyway. Uh, yeah, there's also fellers that that's good. They're in there. And let's see. We have, that would be a wiener. So we have a uh, set of those gaskets, uh, the valve cover gasket right here. We got all these good gaskets. So silicone, of course. If you feel really dedicated, you can put these on. That's for your valves. Uh, not messing with no valves, I can tell you that already. Uh, of course, we've got the uh, revised gasket. These are not plastic. These are metal now. Been like that for a while. And of course on the business end of things we've got these um, head gaskets. Felpro blah 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 R1. Uh, these are actually not marked. No, they're not marked. That, this is the downside here. This is the upside. No, I don't know. Note, these gaskets. Hmm. All right, that's always good. You got a note. No, oh, I forgot. All right, perfect. So, we've got our head bolts laying over there on the bench as well. I guess the angle of the camera is going to see this. Now, the head bolts, the old head bolts, uh, if you noticed, so, got most of the carbon off of it. 
Obviously, I run these to the washer. Uh, same as with the head. Ran those to the washer. So, that came nice and clean there. Valve covers. So, those are nice and clean. Here's the other head. Show you that one too. So, right there. Nice and clean. Now, uh, I will do this part here just because we can. Uh, fast forward, guys. What I'm going to tell you. Fast forward. If you don't want to watch it, fast forward. There's a slide on the YouTube video area, so you can use that slide. I have to get a lot of comments about talking and all that good stuff, so, you know, so get over that. So, this is uh, graphite here. We don't want to grind on that. If we want to get off scraping what we can scrape, and then we uh, use a surface conditioning disc to do the rest of it. Get to that here in just a second. And the reason I say that, that uh, graphite will stop up your uh, discs, so you don't want to uh, run over the top of it. That will end up getting into the, the aluminum in another place, and uh, that's not good either. So that's pretty much graphite, what that is. It, uh, you got the other ports, exhaust ports here. We got to clean clean those as well. Uh, one stud remained in here. We're not going to try to get the stud out. There's no no need in doing that. On a surface conditioning kit, if you happen to have it, blue is made for aluminum, but that does not always work. Uh, you got to kind of think outside the box a little bit. Uh, blue does not necessarily work. This is what, uh, it's a 3M product here. If you're careful, you can, but one of the things that I find people make a mistake, people want to go to the edges. Not put grooves in it. Hold that pad as straight as you can get it on the surface. That way you're not Put nicks in it. Battery about dead. I was wondering what the heck was going on with it. Sorry about this. I'm sure the camera can see this. This is all I'm going to do. This is the, obviously the valve, valve cover sealing surface. I'll we'll be extra careful with that one, because it's very, very easy to take material off of that. Right, so that's that. As far as the Felpro gaskets are concerned, not gaskets, but the uh, Felpro head bolts are concerned. These are for uh, different uh, vehicles, so you get extra bolts in the kit. It is what it is. You get a lot more bolts than what you actually need uh, in this particular case, so you just have to do what you have to do. Still got to buy two sets is what I'm saying. So very careful because this does not have uh, notches ground in it either.
barely go over the top of this. It's good enough for me here. So this one here, I'm sure that's not, that's, this is not going to work. I already know that. It's going to, it's already starting to load up. Like I said, kind of keep that in mind and try to, try to scrape a little bit more. Because when it's gliding, when the pad is gliding over the graphite, but not gliding over this, that will remove material off of that if you're not careful. Really, we're going to keep on scraping here until we get that clean. I'm going to go ahead and pause that camera up and I'll show you the end result. One more thing real quick. I'm sure some of you will notice. I'm not touching the valves, guys. I don't get paid to reman these heads. I care less about that. Uh, there wasn't nothing wrong with that part of it. So we're going to leave these alone. I'm not even going to clean them up. Uh, sometimes that's a bad idea as well. All I'm worried about is my surface up here to get it get it cleaned up. So folks, one, one thing that is good if you know somebody or even if you, uh, if you do it, still if you're doing it yourself, you can still find a shop that has a uh, commercial washer, parts washer and have them clean your parts. Uh, one of the biggest advantages of doing this is uh, your parts is going to come out, they won't have a, a oily film on them anymore. They're basically dry, dry, so uh, we can take compressed air after we get everything cleaned up, which I got everything cleaned up that needs cleaning up. Uh, we can take compressed air and uh, hit over here in the back of the vehicle, toward the back of the vehicle and blow that all off. And there's not going to be anything sticking to no oily film because there's no oily film. So, just an idea, just throw that in there, you know, if you have a, a heavy capability to do that, I would get them washed. And I guess that being said, uh, you know, kind of keep in mind that you don't want to clean parts if you have an open engine sitting over here. Uh, although it's covered up, you still don't want to do that, stay away from it, be on the other side of the shop or whatever. You know, make sure that none of that dust gets all over the place. Alright, we'll build the... Uh, intake intake runners. I'm gonna check those real quick. This is pretty good step. That's a 2,000 feeler gauge. Whoa, that's good for you. Son of a buckaroo. that on here without pushing. Now get a little bit of get a little bit of warpage on that one. And that one is not that bad but this one here does have a little bit of warpage on it. 2000 will slide under it. Five thousand is a no go. And we'll go ahead and build this. Injectors are lubricated up already. I've done that already off camera. Uh, got grease on it, so they'll slide in better. The holes have been cleaned with a brush. That should be a little bit better. I'll flip it around. Uh, thermostat housing to the back. This is our rear over here. 
So that's how this is going to go on. So that's a important thing to note. Pause you up. I got to get some uh, clips to cut that band. Oh, forgot to turn the camera back on. Almost uh, my clips. What I do with my clips? Guys, you lost your clips. Uh, you up again. I go find my clips. Uh, Okay, so that's going to line up for us. Yeah, that should work here. So let's get the clips on. These clips that I took off of them, and those are those here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera up. These will go just in here. So the whole injector does not fall out of the top just like that. I hope you can see that. So they go right here, right, right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put all them on. Stuck that in. Put the two bolts back in it that come in it, or came out of it. Come in it. I put in now. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's how the how the cylinders go. Again, one, three, five two, four, six. That's the way these injectors are. So let's see how this goes on. One. Whoa. Yep. Customer came, so anyway, we're like I said, one, three, five, one more time. I don't know where I left off. Two, four, and six over here. Let's see the arrangement. So one is uh, on this side, side here. So one, three, and five. Get those plugged back in. One. Or, well, five rather. Three. Then number one. That leaves two. This bank here, two, four, and six. These are silly connectors that they use on these things here. They've done head better. One more over here. So uh, well that's that one right there. Now they had that. Uh, okay, so I'll go ahead and set this one off to the side. And that's ready. Get into the uncomfortable stuff here what the hell I just cleaned it and there's gunk on it I don't know how I got there clean that off right there anyway these uh these are cleaned up Should have took the bracket off, I guess I didn't do it though, so 
We'll just do it like this. Let me resituate you here. Um, move that table back a little bit to start to get irritated. Kept rocking and can't do this real good rocking. So, a uh, couple of checks here. Let me check this out. Okay. Repositioning. All right, changed spots, took the bracket off. I started getting a little bit irritated with it. Uh, so, once again, the way, the, the, way the, the way we check these is up here. Again, 2000s. Up here. Go across. We're interested in the back section over here. We'll do the same thing over here. Make sure we got good contact. Uh, you can shine a light, you know. Shine a light, generally you see it. Like I said, this one here is uh, pretty close. Uh, don't appear to have any warpage. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bracket back on. This is the that's got the studs in it. I'm not taking them out. I'm just gonna hold that here. Feeler gauge don't go under it here. Doesn't go under it here. We've got contact. In case somebody wondered that this here thing, I'm gonna get you zoomed out of here. Before we get any silly comments, this is stared scale. That scale is verified to be straight with a, with a stared straight edge. Uh, actual straight edge, the straight edge is way, way longer, hard to put on here. So before I, I can hear it now, so I'll let you know that's been verified. That's uh, probably as good a time as any to put a pen sensor back in it. Uh, let's clean that up. Okay, this one has a, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, it has a crush washer in the back of it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can uh, pull that off of there, put another one on it. But anyway, uh, we'll put a uh, thread sealer on this as well, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera. Uh, something else, if somebody thinks about this, if the tops are not warped, this is not going to be warped. So any warp in the, in the cylinder head will show in any of the any of the surfaces, that's why I did not check that while ago. That's kind of why I skipped that part of it. Uh, on a footnote, these heads rarely warp. In my experience, maybe wrong. I don't know.